Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Um... 106, 106. <clears throat> hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the lovely and snowy Mayhem Studios. Now, it's not snowy in here, but it's freaking cold. Uh, ready to talk some independent professional wrestling. Myself, I'm a videographer producer here in the Pittsburgh area with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade running, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some uh, great documentaries like the Finding Zach Gowan story. Uh, also with me, uh, live from San Antonio, Texas, it is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Eamon Payton. Eamon, two please on the tweeters. How you doing, sir? It's good to be back, Sorg, as always. Very excited to talk about indie wrestling. This week, uh, as, as well as every week, uh, here on the show. Yes, awesome. And we're going to get into it, but of course, please check out uh, all the shows, all everything going on with the Wrestling Mayhem Show at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this, everything else, video, audio formats. And of course, drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. The email address, goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, let us know uh, any questions, any comments on anybody we've talked to and about on the show uh, or anybody you think we should have on the show where we're open to stuff, uh, we're open to ideas. I mean, we, we're really kind of touching on the people that we encounter in the wrestling world for the most part, and we appreciate any feedback from you guys as well. And please check us out. We're live typically 11 p.m. Eastern time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can join us there in the chat room or join us earlier at 9 p.m. for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, tonight we talked a lot about John, or, I'm sorry, not John Cena. We talked about John Cena a bit. Daniel Bryan was the topic of the night over on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, 506 if you want to check that out. Well, I'm very excited tonight. We got somebody from my neck of the woods. Somebody, this man is a mystery, an enigma, and I've learned so much about him just lately. And then when he stalks me downtown, of course, uh, here in Pittsburgh, Jay Worthington Farnsworth has joined us. How are you doing tonight, sir? I am wonderful. It is always great to see you, Sorgatron. <laughs> Sometimes he sees me when I don't know it, and that gets a little weird. Uh, but Farnsworth, <laughs> of course, I've known you for several years. You're 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 the other voice of IWC. Uh, normally flanking uh, our friend of the show, Joe Dombrowski. Uh, so I uh, want to get into that and some announcing uh, uh, talk here in a little bit. But we'd like to start off with a little bit of an icebreaker because you know not everybody's listened to IWC and know that voice. Uh, but you know, being a part of this. How did you discover pro wrestling? What's your earliest memory of uh, uh, pro wrestling kind of in general? My earliest memory of pro wrestling is getting in trouble uh, watching it at my grandfather's house because I got incredibly freaked out. And I want to say the pile driver that Big John Studd gave some guy. And I just absolutely, lo- I, I was convinced that it whoever took the pile driver was dead and my parents and grandfather had to calm me down and tell me, no, 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 that he's fine. It's a show. And from there I was hooked. I watched it all through grade school. Uh, in college, I'm old enough that we didn't really have cable in the dorms. Oh, wow. So, uh, it was, I didn't get to keep watching until after, but, uh, while I was in college, I met uh, the person that would become Shirley Doe, and we became friends and bonded over our love of uh, wrestling and and Muda in specific. So awesome! I, that's an interesting thing about uh, uh, I've noticed, uh, especially when I did come in as a videographer here in probably like 2007 or so with IWC. Like there was definitely circles of people that ran through there. And, uh, and it surely does definitely a name that I hear come up a lot around that. Um, so did that lead to your kind of connection with the IWC? Uh, yeah, actually, before I was ever doing commentary, I was the DJ. Mm-hmm. And if it, at some point, uh, Doe came to me and said, yeah, we need someone else to, to uh, sit in. You know how to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
I started out meek and scared and eventually learned that I'm so much better than everyone else there. And it got a lot easier at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you've worked with several, for several years with Joe Dombrowski. Actually, when did, when did you come across IWC? Oh, uh, good question. Um, I probably started in with them. I was I was DJing somewhere around Super Indie two or three, mm-hmm. and they've just had uh, fourteen this past year, going on fifteen. Yeah. Um, and I know that my first uh, announcing gig with them, I did that, and then immediately went to Japan. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did one show, and then uh, when Shirley Doe was defending the IWC title in Japan, I was part of his entourage. So, Okay. that This is part of the thing I, where I don't know half the stuff about you, man. Um, how, how, so... I, I, I've, I've seen a little bit about this. I've seen that there was some some international travel am, uh, amongst the belt and everything. It's it, you know, of course, we know it, in more recent years, uh, Shima Zion and Naozima Ion went to Mexico with the belt with IWC's uh, championship belt, and this was the heavyweight championship, right? Because I know there was like some kind of international yes. belt too, right? Um, I, I don't remember an international belt. I mean, I know that he we took it international, right? But right. Uh, well, I don't. Know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Just, just tell us a little bit about uh, how that came about, and 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 what was it like to kind of roll to Japan uh, as an entourage? I guess that's awesome. Um, it was great. Uh, <laughs> we uh, at that point, Shirley Doe was also uh, he was also the the head of the wrestling school. That technically it wasn't IWC's wrestling school, but in that in that only in a business sense kind of way. And, uh, he was head of that. And we had formed a relationship at that point. Uh, DDT was considered our sister promotion. Like we were, we had some sort of working arrangement. It's how we ended up with Marie Bay and, uh, and, uh, Denshuku Dino. Uh, and this all came about because Doe had a, had friends over in Japan that he just, I think through the wrestling community, like just discussing stuff online and whatnot. So whenever, uh, he was champ, he asked, is there anyone, you know, looking to book an independent guy over there? And he got a couple bookings together and, you know, one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. So we went over, I, uh, I did with the ring announcing for like two or three shows. And I actually accompanied, uh, did you ever meet Glenn Spector? I did not meet him, but I saw him on a couple of shows when I was first coming to IWC. I okay. I uh, accompanied him to the ring in Kirk Ewan Hall, I think. Wow. I'm remembering it correctly. Wow. Right? Just, yeah. just to kind of touch base. So Glenn Spector. Uh, now, my uh, it, it helped me with this because my experience of Glenn Spector was watching on TV and some of the older DVDs. Um, I remember he had a feud with Chris Hero at the time um, before a lot, I think yeah. a lot of people knew who Chris Hero was. And he was the Wonder Man, Glenn Spector, who came out kind of in a Wonder Woman kind of get up sort of thing. Um, and and it, did he go over in Japan with that version of Glenn Spector? Um, that was one of the... So I, if I'm remembering it correctly, you have to forgive me, this was over a decade ago. Of course. Um, They contacted uh, Shirley Doe and Glenn at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told Glenn that they wanted him to go over as uh, Glenn Q. uh, Mercury, as in Freddie Mercury. Uh, And they wanted him to be a component to Danshuku Dino. uh, Are you familiar with Dino. Is Dino the one that teamed with sexual harassment and ended up power driving Gory with his head down his pants? Yes. Uh, okay. He's now, recently he got more famous. Uh, he was the guy that had Joey Ryan in the uh, cock lock and got hip tossed. Am I allowed <laughs> to say cock? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're allowed to say yeah. cock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So uh, I forgot where I was. He, uh, oh, he, uh, Glenn Spector was going to be uh, working against him initially, and then it, they ended up uh, having a date that got covered by the uh, Japanese wrestling press, and then <laughs> tagging for a little while. So wow, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as a result of that and uh we were joking about how uh this new gimmick of his uh he was trying to do more he wanted to do more of a superman thing a superhero thing and we said well you know you should you could be wonder woman oh it's because he always wore the uh gauntlets the sweatbands on his wrists yeah and uh surely doe's brother dj battle monkey I used to call him uh, Wonder what? Woman. So uh, he became Wonder Man Glenn Spector off of that joke. Nice. Wow. And, 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 a, and a, a career was born, wasn't it? Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you really had a, a kind of a story career early on, at least like as far as experiences and going over to Japan. Um, so the, what did they have you doing over there? Were you just kind of part of helping with the travel with these guys? Or did you... I, I, I couldn't imagine they had you commentating over there. Um, they had me do ring announcing. Uh, the The name of the promotion was the Fighting Ultimate Crazy Kings, uh, which spells out fun. <laughs> it, because, because wrestling's mature the world over. <laughs> and uh, it was it was surreal because the like two or three shows I did well a um I just took my own I had two suits I took over and just you know would alternate them uh but the first night I got there the promoter uh he had rented a tux for me that was about four sizes too small and looked like a cross between Michael Jackson and uh the Beatles but like psychedelic era Beatles mm -hmm. and I I I was grateful that they, you know, had helped us get over to Japan. So I tried to put it on and thank God that thing didn't fit because I know those pictures would still exist today. So I did ring announcing and, um, I, everyone in Japan speaks a little bit of English, but I don't know that what he was having me say was really translating to the crowd. Mm -hmm. The one show uh, the title of the show was about 50 words long. Mm. It was like the fighting ultimate crazy Kings, no surrender, ultimate battle, never give up. And it just kept going. <laughs> it, like it was some, it, it very much felt like a comedy sketch. Uh -huh. And, uh, like I would say stuff and like everyone would wait until I quit talking and then politely clap. <laughs> like they made sure that there was enough time that I clearly was done. And then it was, <laughs> so they were very nice to me. Uh, just, I don't know that they understood what I was saying. <laughs> that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, wow. I get that, That's great. So, so beyond that. Okay. So obviously awesome stuff happening in Japan. Um, but you've also been through much of the, of the storied history of international wrestling cartel. We're talking about earlier, of course, you know, people, you know, a lot of guys we've seen through WWE over the years from CM Punk to even Kalisto that's making waves right now, uh, came through, came through that place. Um, go, going through the years, did you feel like there was something special going on, uh, in that promotion? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a point where I think had the owner at the time really wanted to do it he could have pushed and gotten a i don't know that he would have been as big as a pro wrestling gorilla or uh uh ian rotten's group added in itself yeah like with enough of a push we could have gotten to there we never got there mm -hmm. but i think there was enough talent and enough heat behind us it could have happened it's just the owner at the time i don't think was really looking to get as involved as someone would need to be to make a promotion get that big right because mm -hmm. uh over the years we're talking aj styles christopher daniels delirious 
Cole Cabana, CM Punk's like it, you you look at the roster over the years and other than like the the standard local guys who are pretty amazing in their own right um it, it felt like the the same rosters you saw on something that became Ring of Honor for instance mm-hmm. um I probably have gotten and I say this absolutely sincerely I got the honor to call uh, AJ versus Chris Daniels four to six times Wow! while they were through. And each of those, Matt, like, I don't know that there were any two people that ever worked each other as well as AJ and Chris when they were on. Mm-hmm. When they worked each other, it was as fluid and as good of a set of matches as I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, and then, of course, uh, you, you, you've been working with Dabrowski for, for so many years. Um, you guys have a very interesting uh, <laughs> dynamic whenever you get together. Why whatever do you mean? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Competitive, but not. But I don't know. Um, <laughs> is that something? Now, whenever Joe's wrong, I let him know. Yeah. I have the utmost respect for Joe. <laughs> I, I, I always say that, uh, that I'm the sizzle, but he's the steak. <laughs> all <laughs> of the information, all of the all of what needs to be said comes out through Joe. It's mm. just sometimes he does a little rah, rah, rah. Oh, why is everyone being mean to the good guy? And I have to explain to him that there are people who consider this a business and they will do what it takes to make a living in it. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't begrudge anyone who, say, who would rake an eye or hit someone in the crotch if it means a better payday. Hey, you know, it's, a, it's all about the, the spectacle, right? And that's all a part of it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I've only, of course, experienced you guys uh, for, uh, geez, probably only about half of your career, to be honest. Um, it was it was uh, Joe one that was easy to work with from the beginning? Um, yeah, to be honest, I think Joe, if I'm correct, Joe had shown up maybe a couple shows before I did. Mm-hmm. So really, we the the great part about Joe and I is we've had so much time to figure out our rhythm. Right. It really is. I know when to lay back. I know when to let him get forward. Um, and I know when to when to s- swing the axe, so to speak. Like when when there is that opening for for me to make a point that he is clearly glossing over. Mm-hmm. So. Awesome. awesome. It, uh, it, yeah, we've had the we've had enough time to get it to get our rhythm down, which is part of what makes it difficult. Like, I'm not a big fan of three man teams because unless you're going to invest a couple years of having that three man team work together, uh, it it's so much harder to know you know how that rhythm works with three people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, Eamon here, he's also an announcer, of course, down in, uh, uh, Texas. Uh, so I want to give him a chance if he wants to ask anything as a fellow commentator as well. But I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, what, do, what do you have for, for anybody who wants to get into business on this side of things? Um, do you have any recommendations to, you know, what, what works for you, um, to, to other than obviously falling in as uh, starting as a DJ in your case. And I think even Dabrowski came in as, I think he was originally writing for the website, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it sounds like both of you fell into the position in very interesting ways. Uh, but do you have any, any recommendations for people starting off? If you're just starting out, um, the two things, well, the advice I would give is, uh, A, watch every ma- match that you get a chance to watch. Um, you learn just as much from the bad matches as you do from the good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're lucky, you'll get to see more good than bad, but that's, it's, it's sort of like homework. You don't necessarily want to read about German economics, but if that's the class, you got to learn some German economics. Uh, the other thing I would say is it just, if you can get your foot in the door, get your foot in the door. Uh, if that involves setting up chairs, if that involves selling programs if you want in the business then the you need to show people that you want in the business that's mm-hmm. just the way 
it, it works. It's either you you are going to prove that you want to be there, or if you're lucky like I was, and I openly admit this, you know someone who was already in it, and they can give you a hand up. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, yeah, I would go, going back to how you mentioned, you know, the, the chance to call, you know, AJ Styles, Christopher, and stuff like that. Uh, is there any other match that kind of sticks out to you as one that you really enjoyed getting the chance to call um, that kind of sticks out in your mind? Um, locally, first one that comes to mind was a uh, Super Hentai versus Balls Hot Troy Lords, oh. which probably isn't going to mean anything to anyone that's not in Pittsburgh. But they had a hardcore match. I think it. If I'm correct, it might have been a last man standing. Uh, it was because uh, I think this is the second show I ever attended. And I think it was officially okay. labeled a ladder match, but not the typical something was hung. Like basically there was a ladder involved. And again, yeah, there was a ladder. There was definitely also a table involved. Oh, if yeah. I'm remembering. It right. Certainly, certainly. And, and I recall it as one of the uh, most brutal things I've seen in, a, in an indie wrestling match. Yeah, it was a. Uh... It was something very different because I don't even think there was blood in it, if I'm remembering it right. No. Um, it was just the bumps that they took were were brutal. I mean, I, I feel that that's too simplistic of a, of, a, of a way to describe it, but they just figured out a way to just com continually build what they were doing. It was a really impressive match. Um. <laughs> Nationally, the other people I got, the people that stick out in my mind that I got to call were Delirious. Uh, anytime we had Delirious in, he knew how to entertain the crowd. Delirious and Colt Cabana, in my opinion, are the two guys that know how to get a reaction from the crowd with things other than just spots, like we're just wrestling. Mm -hmm. Their person, they know how to connect with personality and watching them do that every is a is a it was a lesson every time i got to see it i was grateful to get to see it amazing awesome awesome and of course um i i, I gotta mention uh iwc um at, coming up here in march is going to be celebrating their 15th anniversary um on uh, march 12th and definitely, if people are in the Pittsburgh area, need, need to check that out already. Guys like DJ Zima Ion, Gory's coming back. Um, uh, Cole Cabana, as you just mentioned, is going to be a part of this as well. Uh, what does it mean to be part of a promotion for the bulk of those 15 years that, that's uh, made so many uh, strides and, and had such an influence on the industry? It means that I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's still around. <laughs> um, no, I'm... I, uh, I'm assuming both of you watched Daniel Bryan's speech last night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful. I am like, I, I, it's kind of weird because, you know, you watch Daniel Bryan and he, he literally going out on top. He was the combined WWE champion. He, he was, he's one of the top names in the business. If I retire tomorrow, I am one of the smallest cogs in a in a giant box of cogs but i'm still grateful that i got to be that cog like i don't care even if i never make it to the top i'm still grateful that i got to see all the great stuff that i got to see amazing and 15 years in iwc or well I'm, i think i'm at 13 so uh, yeah i'm i'm grateful for it i i there's nothing special about me other than my willingness to yammer on in front of a microphone. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Uh, well, one question we like to round this out with, uh, we got a couple here, but first of all, what are you watching these days? What, what's either entertaining you or are you taking any influence from uh, either way? Um, I watch ROH every week. I watch it with the sound off. Um, that is not a slight against the commentators on that. It's just where I watch it in a public place. <laughs> and uh, 
they don't put the sound on for me. And just I'm ca- grateful that they even put it on. And just in um, case Do- Dabrowski's on there too, right? <laughs> That's right. He has done a couple ROHs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for Joe. <laughs> um, I watch. I watch NX. I I was watching NXT. I now have a backlog of NXT that I need to get through. But frankly, I'm I am all a titter with excitement that Shinsuke Nakamura is showing up. I would watch him do the dishes. So, <laughs> um, and I keep, I, I watch as much Lucha underground as I get to, but mm-hmm. I don't have the television station. So I have to find matches online when I can. And so I, I, I watch that incompletely, mm-hmm. but I've been very impressed with uh, the direction they're taking that and their production value. It looks a lot better than I was expecting. So, awesome. And uh, and lastly, uh, we, you can take this any any way that you want to. Um, I don't think we touched on a lot of it, a lot of the good here as well. But what's the best thing and the worst thing about working in indie wrestling for you? Best thing is I have met uh, a bunch of great people. Um, people that I consider friends. People that. I, I think are genuinely some of the smartest, brightest people I've, I've ever encountered. Uh, the worst thing is, honestly, I think some of these people should definitely be much bigger, more popular, uh, more out there than they are. And I know it bugs them, some of them that they're not. And, they haven't done anything wrong. It's just sometimes it doesn't happen and it's tough to, to, for that to be the reality. You know, we don't all get to be astronauts. Awesome. Well, Farnsworth, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us here. You can hear uh, his voice on the uh, releases for the international wrestling cartel DVDs and uh, digital downloads uh, from IWC wrestling.com indie wrestling.us. A lot of back catalog there, including some of the matches we talked about. I believe you're looking for a November pain from about 2006 for that ladder match, for instance. Uh, <laughs> I am impressed that you that you guys know that. I can't keep any of them straight. Uh, like occasionally, I'll be able to know that, like, oh, that was a super indie because I remember the I remember the super indie tournament. Mm-hmm. But generally, I'm like, yeah, I called that somewhere. <laughs> The floor was dirty. You know, it, that's what I remember. Well, it's so. a very, like, I, 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 I have a visual of that. I kept the stubs for the longest time from when I was going as a fan and everything because it, it just stuck out from, like, yeah, November pain. That's awesome. And it, it, it really, it really kind of worked out. Uh, and plus, kind of, after so many times having to input all those shows into a website or new versions of the website or the digital downloads or something, I kind of memorize that stuff as well. So. <laughs> You get a little. So, what name do you like better? Do you like November Pain or Plumber Slam? Plumber Slam, man. So, but Night of the Superstars is coming up is looking like a Plumber Slam. I don't, I don't know if you saw all the announcements that were coming up tonight. Um, oh, I did. It, it is a jam packed card, isn't it? Oh, geez, to Ashley. Tonka. To, to, ah! to talk, for those that don't know, so so I I don't even know if I'm going to remember. This show already had announced Jeff Jarrett, Booker T, um, uh, Abyss. And they they rounded out with five more people tonight, including Tatanka, uh, 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 Robbie. E. Okay, he's in there. Uh, <laughs> not the, not the, no slight on him, but look at this card: uh, Jake Roberts, uh, Scott Hall, and there's another uh, one. And what? Oh, I was saying Scott Hall with you. Yeah, stereo wise, it, it, it's absolutely insane. It's going to be up in Meville, PA. Uh, if you're in Pittsburgh, it's about halfway up to uh, Erie. And uh, they had 1,400 people there last year when Ric Flair was in and the Steiner Brothers and Kevin Nash and some some killer matches just in the recent years. There was also AJ Styles versus Anthony Nice. Tremendous match to end uh, in that show. Uh, it's usually at least 1,000 people there in that gymnasium. And I think it's going to – maybe they'll break another record there this year as well. Um, I'm hoping you're going to be up there, Farnsworth, calling the action. I, uh, I assume I am. I haven't <laughs> – I, I, it's it's sort of a it's sort of a casual loose kind of thing despite yes. 13 years of commitment. So, I'm assuming <laughs> I'll be there. If I'm not it's because of prior commitments or a just general laziness. I am getting old. 
it's a long drive to Meadville. I understand that. And there's not much going on up there, to be quite honest. So other than this big show. But check out that. Check out the information for that. The 15th anniversary coming up on March 12th. And, of course, uh, Proving Grounds actually later this month as well. Uh, that one's in Royal Valley, PA, which is a new place for them. Um, and so many other shows, IWCWrestling.com. Farnsworth, where are you online? Uh, I'm on that there, uh, Twitter as, uh, Jay Worth. I am not on Facebook because I am old and distrust these technologies. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, that's the best place to find me. So, uh, if you, if you want to know the insights of my, of my terrible little head, uh, Jay Worth on Twitter. J-W-O-R-T-H. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, uh, we'll be right back talking some more indie wrestling with Eamon. And, uh, but in the meantime, go check out this clip uh, talking to Matt Carlins, our friend in the mainstream media, and a writer of Around the Indies over at IndieWrestling.us about how he discovered the Wrestling Mayhem show from our 10-year party back at Looking for Group in January. We'll be right back. All righty. Well, um, a long time ago when I discovered that there was this thing called podcasts, I discovered this app called Stitcher, and I found out that I could search for things on the Stitcher app, so I searched for wrestling, and one of the first podcasts that came up in the uh, after I searched for wrestling on Stitcher was the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So I blindly started listening to this Wrestling Mayhem Show, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I listened to it. You know a couple more times and then one day i was listening to it and the craziest thing happened they said that they all lived in pittsburgh how did this happen that's how i discovered the wrestling mayhem show uh and i sent uh, probably a few badly worded emails over time and then eventually i don't know somehow sort of eventually welcomed me into the fold Got this. Indie Mayhem Show, we are back and uh, check out that. So many other videos over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and on the Facebook, actually. And so many more coming up. We had a lot of great talks about the history. Ten years of Wrestling Mayhem Show. That begot two plus years of this show, actually. So, so uh, uh, having a lot of fun with that, and we're going to be celebrating uh, for uh, several weeks to come here. Uh, but Eamon, uh, well, great, first of all, great interview with a, a fellow commentator in, in Farnsworth. Uh, but let's talk about mm-hmm. some other things going on in indie wrestling. Uh, and, and you had a few ideas you wanted to touch on. Well, I, I, I think this is a good way to kind of touch on the scope of indie wrestling. And its effect on things, obviously, going forward. Uh, obviously, uh, if you listen to us on the Wrestling Mayhem show, or if you're just following the wrestling world in general, everyone definitely is talking about the uh, the stuff that went on with Daniel Bryan, his retirement, um, uh, and obviously the effect that he had on the wrestling business. Um, I think uh, it, it, I, th- I think in turn the effect he had, but also I don't know, just the amazing fact that what indie wrestling has done toward to the business of professional wrestling uh the stuff that we're seeing nowadays that you never would have seen 10 years ago um there's also a story that just came out uh, uh that's being reported by uh, uh mike johnson of a uh, pw insider uh that mike quackenbush of uh, uh owner of chikara chicago wrestling fame uh was at the performance center training uh uh performance center uh, students, I guess you could say, uh, developmental talents, uh, and helping with a with a class, which is so intriguing to me that WWE found uh, it okay and 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 cool to bring in somebody that didn't have the mainstream sort of experience uh, to teach their students, which is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it shows the effect of like to me at least. I don't know about you, sort, but like I think. For the longest time, indie wrestling was sort of separated from what wrestling is. It's oh, it's not, it's not really wrestling. It's this different kind of wrestling that's you know full of you know high spots and high school gymnasiums and 
and and all that stuff. Um, but now it's really just become wrestling. You know what I mean? It's become just as valid or, or legitimate as anything else, kind of. You know what I mean? Just the fact that the, the, the mentality and, and the, <laughs> there's still a, a bit of that mentality if you look at like the storyline they have AJ Styles in currently, but the mentality of, well, if you didn't do anything in the major company, you're nothing. You know? That's kind of not the case anymore. Right. I mean, like you say, we're, we're having guys come straight in like the Samoa Joes, like an AJ Styles that don't have to go through the proving grounds of of of, of their lower like dark matches and, and stuff saying, look, you've made your name. We understand that this is the Internet uh, age. And, and, and it, you know, just because you weren't here doesn't mean people don't know who you are. That's not even in a uh, you know WCW sort of thing, um, but even and you mentioned you know the Mike Quackenbush aspect you know and that's great that a guy like that is influenced a guy that's trained so many great guys out of the Wrestle Factory uh, in the in the Greater Philadelphia area with Chikara and, and done something interesting and, and and I know you're you're a big fan of and I am too his discussion about wrestling is art and an art form yeah. and that's the influence that's going to be in there and I presume this is probably a one-off kind of seminar thing that he went down and did and helped with like he's not officially at least, at least that's what it seems for now okay and, um, and, 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 that makes, it, but. and I'm sure that like partially I think the first glimpse of that along that line that we saw Sarah friend of the show we talked to her on Wrestling Mayhem show uh, Sarah Del Rey uh, Sarah Amato that we, we also now mm-hmm. see on Breaking Ground um, is and I think that influence is profound because you're looking at the four horsewomen of Charlotte, Sasha Banks, uh, Becky Lynch, and Bailey, and seeing how they are literally changing the game. And she has a hand in that. She obviously yeah. has a hand in that. I mean, the girls have worked their asses off, of course, and not all of them, of course, started there in the performance center. Um, but I, I, I think between her and Norma Smiley. And, and 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 Albert and 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 uh, somebody uh, uh, for, Brookside. formerly Billy Gunn, uh, I, I think yeah. have been a profound, awesome influences on all those that talent that's there, um, and and you're seeing that 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 rise, um, yeah. but even respects to guys like Kevin Owens, look how much he's risen, right? You know, uh, and 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 that they're bringing in people from Japan and giving them uh you know brighter brighter spotlights to, to come into. I think it's, it's, it's amazing to see that. And it's, if you can't look at NXT in the last year or two and not see ring of honor from, se- from several years before you really yeah. can't, I mean, honestly, better production, different storytelling a little bit, <laughs> but the wrestling is completely there. Yeah. And I think it's just really cool. Cause I remember being in the age where like WWE was still in the mentality of, we can't mention any other wrestling organization. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when we thought it was cool because they were playing clips from the wrestler that had like Ring of Honor logos on stuff. <laughs> like they're like, "Oh my god, that is so amazing!" Like, and because that that's never happened before, mm-hmm. and now it's just commonplace, right? And even this uh, Triple H, you know, Triple H showing up at Evolve, everybody's going crazy about it. But it's kind of it feels not surprising at this point, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I mean, uh, you, you, and I think you see this more as you watch the documentaries, like CM Punk ones um, and, and other ones, where you see Ring of Honor footage pop up as well. Uh, I, I think that's telling. You know, they don't see them as competition; they're seeing like somebody in there probably Triple H sees like this is where the guys are coming from. There's good stuff there. I would not I, I, I don't think I don't think a guy like Triple H like has a lot of time that he can watch a lot of the indie wrestling or anything like that. But I feel he's like I feel like he's a guy that tunes into your Ring of Honor's Lucha Undergrounds to see what else is going on. Um because I, I again I, I feel like for whatever anybody says about him, I, I, I just think I I hear about that he is a wrestling fan you know, beyond anything. And that's why he's so good at what he does. And, um, and he recognizes that. And, and again, you're seeing what he's molding with NXT. That's his pet project. That's wrestling. How he that's that's wrestling in his vision and mold, not Vince's. And yeah. that's the future. And, and the future is very promising and you're going to have those rough spots as that transitions in. And, and, then the question becomes, as the Indies, as we know, it, become what influences WWE, what is next for the Indies? Yeah. So. Oh, I agree completely. And, and, and that's up to guys that are coming in. Like, hey, Proving Grounds is a show that we're having up here. And that's when they start introducing the people coming out of the wrestling schools, right? 
and mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know what what it's like for you guys. You know, we we talked about wrestling schools down there, with reality of wrestling for Booker T, uh, for instance, yeah. and and I don't know what your system is there for Inspire, how you bring people in. Um, but those There's are, a couple of good groups down there. What's that? There's a couple of cool schools actually down there. So okay, and you guys, what well, you look to them for the most part, and 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 mm-hmm. see who's kind of coming out of there and who's impressive, and give them shots probably. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think I did. Uh, a lot of people have said this before when it comes to just the scope of wrestling in general. People think that, you know, you know, all these towns get signed from, you know, the independents, what's going to happen, but new towns will rise up and, and new town, new impressive names will emerge through that all. There will always be talent, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we even saw that there, uh, you know, with IWC, you know, we, it seemed like we were on such a high of guys like a Dalton Castle and RJ City being a part of that. And that's rolled around to those guys obviously, you know, either left for whatever reason or went on to Ring of Honor. And then guys like Jimmy Nuts are stepping up and completely being a force there. Um, and I think, you know, and, and you see the same thing. It's the same process coming in NXT. You, you're watching um, the Nevilles and everybody moving up and somebody's going to fill that place. It might not be exactly the same. You might have a little bit of laws, but it's going to come back around if there's a good system in place and there's they're always the cream's always going to rise and something's going to fill that place, yeah. you know. Um, and, and it's just a matter of time as far as any any of those go. Um, and and really if the fan base to an NXT and IWC and Inspire Pro is strong enough, they'll stick around through the laws, you know, and and yeah. and, and see what's next cuz chances are half those people are there are like looking for the next thing. And that's why they're coming to your show or watching your show. So I think yeah. it'll be really, really interesting to see what happens out of that. You know, uh, yeah, what, who's then who's going to be the next pro wrestling gorilla? <laughs> 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 or something like that. So, all right. Uh, well, Hey, you know, there's this young, I'm starting AJ Styles still on the Indies. Apparently <laughs> I don't know what show I'm doing anymore. Cause I'm, I'm looking at this list over here. Um, but uh, uh, Matt Carlins, who, who joined us uh, tonight, uh, the, the geez, he, he, he has his fingers in so much around here. I'm realizing <laughs> between yeah. around the Indies, Mayhem Mania, he's got his he's got his uh, soapbox column on uh, on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. But uh, he's all he, is he doing more things for Wrestling Mayhem Show than I am these days? Is that where we're at right now? <laughs> uh, but anyways, hey, he's a hard worker. But uh, uh, apparently, this, uh, this some kid named AJ Styles was at a show this weekend uh, in Georgia, in uh, uh, Canton, Georgia. So definitely, probably down the road from wherever he lives out there. Uh, but yeah, a part of this taking on Corey Hollis for Georgia Premier Wrestling. Um, so weird. And then we we're talking about this a little bit off air. So great that like WWE is good enough to let them honor their commitments when they get signed. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. When's that, like, it, it did seem like probably 10 years ago when somebody got signed, he just like, well, he's not on the show anymore. And, uh, they take him off and also seeing him in front of like, what, maybe 200 people here, uh, versus seeing him on raw Monday night is a little interesting as well. Really kind of, uh, add some perspective there. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so it would also, you look at this with like 200 people here. You're like, how did they book him? <laughs> AJ Styles was not a cheap guy when he was, you know, the last couple of years, right? Uh, but yeah, I can only assume the uh, Georgia connection. Maybe it has to be something. Somebody pulled in yeah. a favor. Uh, somebody's like in the same fireman's club or something with with his brother or something. Is he have a brother? I have no idea. Uh, but it was a <laughs> uh, fan cammed entire match, a twenty four minute video um, on IndieWrestling US posted. If you want to check out this match. And, you know, still bringing it, you know, for the most part from the looks of things. So good stuff there. Anything else on the indies uh, happened this weekend of note that we should probably be uh, uh, talking about here, Eamon? Well, we mentioned we mentioned last week, uh, uh, yeah, obviously, because it was upcoming. Uh, but National Pro Wrestling Day happened. For National Chicago. Pro Wrestling Day. Hey, that's you. Um, it's a really, really fun event. Uh, uh, they uh, used to help raise money for the Polaris Project, which is a, uh, an organization that helps – uh, curb uh, human trafficking in America, um, and they reached their, they exceeded their goal uh, for donations, which is very cool to see. Um, uh, they had their whole Young Lions Cup tournament uh, on that night uh, with the Estonian Thunder Frog winning the whole thing in the end. Um, they also had uh, I, uh, wait, I, wait 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 I got that pleases me because I had an encounter with the uh, Estonian Thunder Frog at one point. Uh, oh really? Yeah, because we had the DVD table at the first National Pro Wrestling Day. Oh yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was waiting for you to echo that. Um, but uh, oh, next up for wrestling game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're new to this, this is a long-standing gimmick from the first National Pro Wrestling Day over at Wrestling Mayhem Show. But, um, anyways, uh, what was I getting at? Oh, but no. Uh, so we had a DVD table for IWC, right? And he came up and was asking about the DVDs, very much in the character of the Estonian Thunder Frog. And I was like, oh, this is what it's like to encounter a Chikara. And I had been to a Chikara show before, of course, but <laughs> but I had only heard about the, I think at the time, like you and maybe Bobby or somebody else who was in a Chikara at the time were, kept talking about the Estonian Thunder Frog. And I'm like, what in the world are you guys talking about? And then I was face to face with him. And he's carrying around, didn't he have like a giant hammer or something as well? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that that, that is so that is so heavy. Only he can carry it. Exactly, exactly. And this is the same show where I'm sitting there with the uh, at the time promoter for the International Wrestling Cartel and watching his perplexed face as he was watching Kaiju Big Battle for the first time ever, and then and then <laughs> and then asking so many interesting questions to the to the Kaiju promoters. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that over drinks was fascinating. Uh, but anyways, um, that the stories from that night. But anyways. Um, you know, drifting and such through Philadelphia. <clears throat> um, where were we? Oh, so but, uh, go ahead. Uh, also on that show, uh, Princess Kimberly, the Chikar Grand Champion, beat uh, Mickey James. Uh, and what I heard was a very great match. Uh, also, because uh, uh, they wanted us to bring it up, uh, uh, one of the big things that uh, was it was uh, across the indie wrestling world uh, was the, uh, the Chuck Taylor retirement tour that was happening all last year. Uh, well, apparently, uh, with him wrapping up the retirement tour and having his last match in Chikara Pro uh, at their season finale, uh, apparently the trademark on uh, Chuck Taylor's name uh, has uh, been uh, has expired, basically. Uh, and we have a new Chuck Taylor. Uh, a bit, uh, can, is it safe to say darker Chuck Taylor? Uh, he. He looks very much like a, a certain manager on Ring of Honor named so- uh, Stokely Hathaway, um, and uh, yeah, he's he's the new Chuck Taylor. Uh, there was also a guy on the show named uh, uh, making his Chicago Bird debut named Scoop Tatum, who looked very similar to Chuck Taylor. Um, uh, I think he'll have a, I think he'll have a bright future professional wrestling. I heard his 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 debut was very impressive and. Uh, uh, who, who knows where we'll see him down the line? So, amazing. Only in indie wrestling, right? Oh, you know, Only in I indie hope wrestling. maybe at some point this will become. I mean, in my dream of dreams, there's a point Scoot where Taylor will be retiring on the on the closing <laughs> segment. No, no, I wasn't going that way. I wasn't going that way. In my dream <laughs> of dreams, there's a world where Evolve and Chikara have like a half hour show weekly on WWE network. Like maybe it gets to that point where they get these agreements and they have these shows and it supports whatever happens there locally. And they have these mini things happening. These it's still regional, right? But, but you know, they have that opportunity through WWE network whenever they see, you know, an opportunity for these creative things to happen. That's different than what's happening on TV. And that could be something of a focus group for them to see. Well, you know, just like NXT is popping up, like, well, maybe we should do some more things like NXT on WB. But now, like, Chikara is doing this thing over there. It's completely different. And they start maybe integrating some ideas from that into Monday Night Raw, right? Uh, and Evolve and whatever the hell Evolve does these days, because I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know those sort of things. Um, I, that's that's my pipe dream when it comes to that kind of thing. And I, I don't know. I. Th- I might be crazy. I might be crazy, but maybe Triple H is too. Maybe Triple H is a mad genius in that idea. And he completely listens to this show. What's up, Paul? What's up, Paul? <laughs> uh, hey, man, it's been a blast, as usual. Um, as indeed. Check out Eamon's World down at InspireProWrestling.com. And, oh, oh, what's the name of the podcast I was just talking to you? Is it like the... Oh. Uh, Slam Masters. Slam Masters. Slam Masters. I want to give a shout out to uh, them. So they followed Mayhem Show, and I noticed it. So I, I, I saw like, like official, unofficial podcast of Inspire Pro Wrestling. What is this? And I didn't know if you knew about they're, they're, them. They're official in the sense that they've gotten our approval to do it. They're unofficial <laughs> in the sense that it's completely fan run and and yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, uh, it's uh, John Goldson and Julian Titus, uh, who are two inspired pro wrestling fans, uh, have their own podcast that's literally all about what we do. Uh, they do a, a pre-event uh, podcast. They do a post-event podcast. Uh, they've done interviews and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, they're, they're really cool guys. Uh, and I'm just glad so we got the chance to listen to them and, and enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, go check them out. Uh, you can follow them uh, at slam underscore masters, and I'll give you all the uh, info to go check them out. Awesome. Yeah, they sound great. Good stuff going on. Also, a big shout out to Chikara in 15.com from our friend Alex Cars. Uh, as he was discussing earlier, he tried to make sense of uh, the National Pro Wrestling Day. I believe it's the episode National Something Something Day uh, on there. Uh, so go take a look at that. He does a great job in covering Chikara, making sense of everything, and having some great interviews with fans and performers and the like over there. Uh, Chikara in 15.com. Yeah, are they the official unofficial Chikara podcast? Maybe I don't, I'm not sure. Sure, <laughs> let's go with that. Let's run with it. Uh, but def- check out all that kind of stuff. And, and of course, wrestling mayhem show.com. He's at Amen 2 Please, I'm at Sorgatron. Um, check out uh, indie wrestling.us. Subscribe to everything and join us live at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, live at wrestling show.com. That's a lie next week. We, we might rerun it, but we are actually scheduled to talk with Shane. Taylor, who is down yes, in indeed. your neck of the woods, Eamon, uh, down there in Texas, but formerly of my neck of the woods up here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll talk to him and catch up to, uh, with him. Uh, maybe I can find the old interview where I got to talk to him backstage at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance uh, from a few years ago as well. Uh, so, yeah, we're having that earlier in the day, but we may rerun it uh, here live if you guys are in, into that. Uh, but look for that as well. And in two weeks, we are scheduled to have Ray Lynn joining us of International Wrestling Cartel. Also, she's been uh, popping up on Women of Honor for Ring of Honor. Uh, so mm-hmm. that uh, we're going to talk to her about that and uh, everything else coming up in women's wrestling and the like and everything. And we got some pretty exciting names that we're, we have in the works uh, for uh, the coming weeks, months uh, uh, as well. Uh, keep it going. Check out all the past interviews, everything, 105 episodes of more or less interviews and indie wrestling talk and you can check that all out we've had some great great names over the years here thank you everybody for uh, uh supporting the show and also make sure you're supporting indie wrestling all right yeah Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network at SorgatronCM.com.